In this video, we're going to talk about something called the Weighted Average Cost of Capital, which is commonly abbreviated as WAC. So we're going to talk about what it is and, and how you would go about calculating it, and then we'll walk through an example. So when we think about WAC, this Weighted Average Cost of Capital, uh, really what we've got is we've got the financing of the firm. So let's, we've got a firm here. Now this firm is going to be financed from two primary sources. One is debt and one is equity. What does that mean? Well, the firm can get money from borrowing or people can put up equity, you know, shareholders or the owner themselves. So what we're thinking about here is, is we're looking at this mix of debt and equity. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and create, uh, basically calculate cost uh, for each one. The cost of equity, that's the RE, and then the cost of debt. Uh, after factoring in uh, the, the tax considerations. Uh, and we're basically going to assign a cost uh, to each one. Uh, but we have to weight these costs, right? Because we don't know how much of the mix uh, this debt or the equity is. Okay, so the debt for the firm might be just 10% of its financing, uh, whereas the equity is the other 90%. So we can't just go ahead and say we'll take a 50-50 split. So this is going to be make, make more uh, sense when we go through an example, but for right now, just let me walk you through this formula. So the weighted average cost of capital is equal to, uh, we've got the firm's equity. Now, depending if you take finance, so you, you'd be using the market value of the firm's equity, uh, you know, and if you're taking an accounting course, it might just settle for the book value of equity. But in any case, we'll just, we'll just call it equity here. The firm's equity uh, divided by the total of the firm's debt and equity. Now, when we're talking about debt here, what we mean is interest-bearing debt. Interest-bearing. So we're not just talking about liabilities in general, which might include things like unearned revenue. We want to talk about interest-bearing debt. Uh, bonds that the firm has or something like that. So so this is right here. What we're trying to do is calculate that proportion of the firm that is being financed by equity. Okay, And then what we're going to do is once we've got that proportion, right, this share of the financing that is uh, attributable to equity, we're going to multiply it by the cost of the firm's equity. Right, That's what RE is commonly. This is the cost of equity. Let me just write that here cost of the firm's equity, right? And that'll be something like 8%, 9%, 15%. It depends on the firm. Uh, but the, the, the main idea here is that uh, we have to figure out the proportion of the firm that is financed by equity and then multiply that by the cost associated with that equity. Now we've got, so this is all kind of one big component of WAC is the equity side. Uh, but now we've got the debt side, right? So debt is part of this, this financing of the firm. Uh, and so now we have to say, okay, well, we'll take a look at the firm's interest bearing debt and then see what proportion that is of the debt plus equity. So what proportion is the debt of the firm's financing? Uh, and then we're going to multiply that by the cost of debt. Okay, this would be like the yield to maturity on the bonds or something like that. Maybe that's 6% yield to maturity. So the cost of the firm's debt and then we're going to multiply that by uh, 1 minus uh, the tax rate. Now, why are we doing that? Because we have to remember that we, we want the after-tax cost of debt uh, because there's a tax shield associated with interest. We'll have a different video on that, but just, just bear in mind, that's why we're uh, multiplying by 1 less the tax rate uh, due to this, this tax shield. Uh, so basically, all we're really doing, we've got a big long uh, equation here uh, to calculate WAC, but all we're really doing is saying, what is the proportion of the firm that is financed by equity, and what's the proportion that is financed by debt? Okay, And then we're going to take those proportions, uh, those weights, and then we're going to multiply them by, by the associated cost, the cost of equity uh, and the cost of debt. So let's go ahead and let's work through an example, and I think that, that you'll find it to be a lot a lot easier when we do that. So, so we've got an example here where you, you start a firm and you start this firm by borrowing $2,000 uh, from the bank and that $2,000 the bank's going to charge you 6% 6, 6 interest um, and then you, you put up some of your own money, some equity uh, of $8,000 and then let's just say, you know, this calculating the cost of equity is, is a whole nother video. You can use things like the capital asset pricing model. But right now, let's just say that that's 12.5% uh, 
uh, without getting into how that we actually calculate that. So then we say, well, we've got a tax rate uh, of 40%. So now we can go ahead uh, and we can just, just plug the numbers in uh, to this formula that we have here, right? So uh, in the interest of space, I'm going to try and do that down here right below our example. So let's just go through this step by step. So move down a little bit further. So the WAC, our weighted average cost of capital. See, we can't just take these two and say, okay, let's add those up and divide by two, right? Why can't we do that? Well, because debt is only 2,000 of the financing and equity is 8,000, right? I, I hope you understand kind of the idea, uh, the concept behind why we're doing this. So the WAC is going to be equal to and we'll have, let's do the, the equity side first. So we've got $8,000 in equity, right? So to calculate the proportion of equity, we say 8,000 over 2,000 of debt plus 8,000 of equity. Why, why are we doing this? Well, look, we've got $8,000 in equity up here, but we know that the firm's total financing is both of these, right? It's 2,000 plus 8,000. So to get the proportion, uh, we're taking 8,000 and then dividing it by that total. And basically what we're seeing here is that, um, you know, we're going to have 0.8 or 80% or however we want to think of it. The financing is coming from uh, this, this equity source. Uh, so, but now we have to multiply this uh, by the, the cost of equity, which is 12.5%, which is the same as 0.125. All right, so now, now we've got kind of the, the equity component here. Uh, change colors and now we have to add in uh, the, the cost of the weighted average cost of this this debt here so now we're gonna go and basically do something very similar just take now the 2000 which is this debt but now we have to we have to weight that we have to take the proportion of that so now that's 2000 over 2000 plus 8000 okay now we're gonna multiply that by the cost of debt that's six percent so that's the same as 0 0.06. But now we have to we have to factor in that after tax uh, cost of debt. So what we're going to have is one minus the tax rate, one minus t, which is one minus uh, 0.4. You know, t is just the tax rate. And so now we've got this this big long equation. But but let's let, let me just uh, save you the math here. Uh, so our whack. If we take this this whole piece right here, uh, what that comes out to is 0 0.0072. Okay, and now this piece over here, if we calculate that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this piece here, this first piece, is actually 0 0.1. So this is 0 0.1. Apologize there. And then this piece is 0 0.0072. So we add these together, and it's 0 0.1072, and that is equivalent to, and we think about a percentage, it's a little easier conceptually, 10.72%. So the weighted average cost of capital uh, for this firm that we started here is 10.72%. Now let's, let's go back here for a minute. Now, if you calculate and you say, okay, let's add up 6% and 12.5%, and let's just say, you know, we'll divide it by two and get the cost of capital. Well, what you're doing is now you're just getting, we can call it the average cost of capital, right? Because you're just taking two different costs of capital, the debt cost and the equity cost, and you're just, you're just saying, let's just, let's just divide that by two. Let's just average it. But we're not taking just the average because we recognize uh, that there are different weights that should be assigned here because 80% of our firm is actually being financed by equity. So more weight is being given to the, the equity component uh, of our cost of capital. Uh, and that's why we call it the weighted average cost of capital.